Alrighty, so today we're doing Genshin Impact. This was one that um, my patrons voted on. They decided for me to do Genshin Impact fan art, which is really exciting because when I offered that suggestion um, on the poll for them to vote for, uh, I had no idea what to do. <laughs> I was just like, Genshin characters look cool, let's offer Genshin Impact fan art as an option, and that's the one they picked. So. Nice. <laughs> and at first I had thought about doing, um, drawing one of the, the plethora of cute boys because Genshin is great because it remembers that people who may be interested in men also play video games and they have plenty of cute husbandos in the game. It's not just cute waifus, it's also great little male characters as well. So that's really cool. And at first I was like, maybe I'll draw one of them. Um, but then something got in my head and I decided, no, you know what would be more fun? Um, drawing these littlies. <laughs> there are currently three. I think there's a fourth one coming in soon. Um, just three like tiny characters. They're all like child size. Um, they're super cute, little chibi basically characters. Uh, and I was like, let's draw them. <laughs> Because I figured that would be easy. This took me forever to do. <laughs> and also, uh, Genshin Impact designs are so elaborate. I'll talk about that in a second. I'll talk about how like I discovered by doing this. Just how elaborate Genshin designs are. But yeah, so what we're doing today are Klee, that's this one in the center. Kiki, she's on the right. Um, and Dionya. Dionya? Cat girl. Um, I don't play a whole lot of Genshin. I'm gonna admit that. I do own it. <laughs> um, I haven't beaten the dragon. That's how not far I am. Um, so now you know that I'm uh, a fake gamer. <laughs> it's just boring. I don't know. I just want to summon characters, but I don't want to pay money to do that. So I don't know. I think with Genshin Impact. Okay, we're gonna let's take a second to talk about gameplay. So I think Genshin Impact has a really solid base. Um, for a game design. Uh, and it's because it's um, stealing its game design from two different games, <laughs> let's be honest. It's clearly taken inspiration from Breath of the Wild, which I'm fine with. When I first heard about Genshin Impact all those years ago, I was really excited for it to come out because I, I liked the idea of being able to play basically Breath of the Wild, but with cute anime characters. Um, and that's effectively what it is. However, it doesn't really jive with the rest of the gameplay because combat is handled much more similarly to like near automata and i think that it's kind of really bad to, <laughs> to try to fuse those two things together because the stamina bar first means you're constantly running out of like you, you always run out of stamina and the world's a it's a pretty big world it's it's you know it's a big game and it takes an eternity to get anywhere because you have a teeny weeny stamina bar and I, I just don't think any, like bringing over the stamina for running from Breath of the Wild like having it for while climbing mountains and stuff that makes sense but while running it's dumb because imagine if you were playing um, near Automata but you had to stop running every two seconds because your stamina bar runs out it's just not cohesive design. They didn't consider how stealing these two different elements of gameplay don't jive together. Um, and I think it really hurts the game a lot. Um, uh, but that's just me. Combat's kind of boring. I wish, it feels like it's trying to be more interesting, but combat in Genshin Impact, I mean, you're just really mushing bu mashing buttons, which makes sense. It's technically a mobile game. I'm playing it on PlayStation 4, but you can also get it on your phone. Um, so it can't have the most elaborate combat like Nier Automata, which it's trying to emulate. Uh, but that does just kind of mean you're you're just hitting square a lot. Like enemies tend to just be sponges for like like damage and. I just, every time I enter combat, I end up being more bored than than excited. The most exciting combat encounter I had was I decided to fight something way over my level, and so I just had to run around a lot. Um, I like Genshin Impact still. Like, despite all these flaws I'm listing, I think the character designs are, are really good, despite being so complicated. And 
the world looks really nice, the game feels good despite it doing its best to hinder you. And uh, quite frankly, I, I'd i love for MiHoYo, which is the, the, the game like publisher, the creator, I'd love for them to make their own thing next, to make a real game, you know, to not just try to steal the aesthetic of Breath of the Wild. Because, you know, you collect items in that game, like you can pick up apples and mushrooms and shit, like how you can in Breath of the Wild. It's worthless. <laughs> in Zelda, what you're doing is you need to, like, cook, um, you, you need to- you need to cook food, you need to make meals that can give you buffs and heal you and shit. You- there is a cooking element in Genshin, but, uh, it feels like a tacked-on element. It feels like the- it was just decided to- we'll do that because Breath of the Wild did that, and we're clearly trying to gank off of Breath of the Wild's design here. Um, I feel like they are a good enough company that they could make their own thing without feeling the need to just kind of cheese off of design elements from Breath of the Wild and Nier Automata, uh, especially since those two game designs don't work together, <laughs> because putting a stamina, stamina bar in Automata is one of the stupidest things you could do. But clearly they're good at making, like, enjoyable games, despite its problems. Genshin is wildly popular, and hell, I might even play it later today, despite all these complaints I'm volleying against it. But I would really be interested to see MiHoYo make, like, their own game. To not try to rely on, look, it's Breath of the Wild, but with anime girls, like how they kind of did at first while marketing Genshin. I think they've created a brand strong enough now that people can recognize MiHoYo and, and would be willing to opt in for a game without just being drawn in by Zelda, but anime, you know? I would also really love for them to make a quote-unquote real game. Um, mobile games are by all means also real. Um, but rather like a not mobile game. I would like to see them try to create like a platform, like a, a game for consoles and PC. Um, I think I think it could be really good because honestly I think the the mobile game element of uh, Genshin Impact is its biggest weak point. Not necessarily the uh, the gotcha sort of gotta get your husbands and wives, but through paying money to summon them. You know, that's- I'm not in love with that idea. But it works, you know, it's fine. It feels more fair than other games, like, I've played in a similar genre. Um, but I think it being a mobile game has really limited the type of gameplay it can have, which I think they could make way more interesting combat if they weren't limited by- by their, uh, by the technology that they have to work with. And then also on top of that, um, <laughs> so Genshin crashes all the time. Um, and yeah, it's technically a mobile game and I'm playing it on a PlayStation 4, so it's, I'm not expecting a flawless game, but it, it stutters a lot. My frame rate di dips a lot and it'll crash too often for, for what I would like. Um, and I think if they were just making quote unquote a real game that wasn't also a mobile game, it would just lead to a much more enjoyable experience because then I would actually get to fucking play. Because <laughs> I, I like, I do still like Genshin Impact. I think this is a great first step for MiHoYo to become a more a more successful game company. Clearly they know what they're doing. They put effort into this game. It isn't just Breath of the Wild um, stolen assets but with anime girls. It's it's way more than that. And there's a reason why it's gained so much popularity. Um, so I think it could be really great to see them make a game unhindered by the limitations of it also needing to run on online constantly and or on a mobile, like, mobile platform. Um, that's my Genshin Impact two cents. <laughs> Let's talk about character design a little bit. So, I've, for a little bit now, used Genshin Impact regularly as an example of, th this has good designs, you should look into what they do and, you know, study Genshin to see how you can improve your own art kind of a thing. That's been a stance I've had. Um, 
However, I think I'm gonna stop saying that, not because I think Genshin Impact's designs are bad, by all means, but rather because I myself realize that I haven't done that. Like, I've taken a passing sort of, like, round of research into Genshin designs. I looked at a bunch of the male characters to figure out why their male characters look so good and interesting, despite all of them having basically the same um, body type. <laughs> and... And that's what I did, is I looked at how they use clothing and silhouette on male characters. But I never really took the time to study the female ones until now, because of this video. And because of that, I just never really realized how ludicrously detailed these characters are. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I do think these characters all look really good in Genshin Impact. I do still think it is a good example of well-done, high-level character design. Um, the problem is I just haven't taken the time to study what makes Genshin's character design so good. And it's just, they're- holy- okay. <laughs> Drawing these three girls was a pain in the ass, and these were the little ones. <laughs> They're just- they've got a lot of detail, there's- and deceptively so. Because you see them, and they've got like, big, easy to identify kind of features. Like- like Diana here. Pink hair, cat girl, uh, and then like- a, like large bag shorts. Like there are features that are like, I understand what she looks like, I- I see her, I- yeah, identifiable. I recognize this cat girl now. But it's not until you like you really take the time to look at how many like small details each character has. There's a lot of trimming. There's a lot of like very light patterns. Like like they're not. It's not really in your face loud colors. They're usually pretty faded, like minute elements, and it just really adds up. And I've just never really noticed that before. Um, and honestly, I'm so impressed. I follow a good number of artists on Twitter who draw uh, just a shitload of, of Genshin Impact art. And it always looks great. And I am so impressed with them because the idea of drawing these characters as often as some of the people I follow on Twitter do sounds like a nightmare. I, even in, for this picture, I, I rendered them, like I simplified them a little bit. I didn't do all of the, of the patterning and stuff on them. And... I'm just so impressed that MiHoYo and the design team have done such a good job of keeping every single character looking so unique and so interesting while also having so much detailing in them. I think it helps that these characters tend to have very limited color palettes. You don't see a ton of color on any given character. They tend to stick to the colors of their elements because there are five or six different elements in the game um, and they tend to stick to those which is smart that's good that means you can easily understand like oh they're wearing a lot of red they're probably fire you know which is good and that also means that they they kind of have a a smaller palette to work from overall like you know the the artists don't have to rack their brain of what color should this character feature so much it's like well what element are they okay work with that now it's really smart um and so and then within a character's design they tend to have only a a couple main colors like we'll use kiki um the again the the one on the right as an example so she's got a lot of blues, like bluey purples, um, and there's a lot of that shade of blue on her, but not much of her design deviates away from that color, just in different shades. So it's like a blue and then also a light version of that blue and then some darker shades of that blue. A lot of her is blue and then like the main standout color from that is the more like the, the maroon purple that you see like, in the tassels on her hat and in her eyes. So, by limiting these colors, kind of like Klee has yellow hair, mostly red, white. You know, by limiting these colors down like that, it helps a lot. I think that's the big thing that keeps their designs from feeling messy or noisy, is while there are a lot of colors on them, they're all in the same range. They're not deviating from no more than four primary colors to have on any given character. So 
And I think that helps a lot, because especially since it's a game, you know, they've got a decent amount of, like, body types and, like, variety, honestly. Like, different- like, there's a lot of different heights, even with characters similar- in a similar, like, kind of body type, you know? Not every man is the same height, not every woman is the same height. Um, but beyond that, there's not a ton of diversity in, in terms of, uh, the body types. You know, there's no overweight characters. There hasn't been a very, like, muscular character yet. The biggest variety you will see is how big are the girls' titties or thighs. Um, which I understand. It is a video game. You have to- they're working with some limitations. Characters can't feel too different from each other so that combat doesn't become suddenly way different because you decided to play as the- the lar the heavyset character. But- Within that, like, that means they're limited, you know? That means they, they only have so many different types of bodies to work with. And I think having these, like, really well-defined colors helps a lot. Because you'll also notice the girls all kind of have a very similar silhouette. There are a lot of skirts and dresses and shorts in this game. You can basically see every girl's legs, um, give or take a, a couple. Um, and so these colors are doing a really great job, and honestly I'm impressed that each character does still feel so unique, because not only are they working with a limited number of elements, but also that means that th like there are only so many different colors on Earth. The fact that so few, like, uh, characters all feel so distinct from each other despite having so many of them and having such limitations on, like, how their bodies can look different. I'm impressed, honestly. I know it feels like I'm ragging on Genshin Impact a lot in this video, um, but I, I really do think it's well done for what it's trying to do. Um, the problem is now, though, that I, I just think they aren't an excellent example for beginners to study to figure out what makes their design so good because there's a lot going on in these designs and it could be easy for someone to think oh i'll just have a lot of details without taking the time to sort of study why genshin's designs still feel cohesive despite the amount of details on them so yeah uh there i would i would describe genshin's designs as high level <laughs> this is this is a high level of design. Um, and that's good, because I appreciate getting to see some really well done designs, despite the fact that drawing them took a whole eternity. <laughs> I think between these three, I think Kiki is my favorite, despite being the most pain to draw. Um, I just really like her color palette, and, and the, like, the idea of her being the, like, the hopping zombie kind of, kind of deal is just very cute. I think, I think she's super duper cute. The only one of these three I have is Klee, that's the fire one in the middle. Um, and also, I, like I said, I haven't played a ton of Genshin, so I don't know anything about these characters. <laughs> I didn't do any research on them beforehand. Um, I drew them based off of what I deduced their des their character might be based off of their like like uh, their their official artwork. That's it. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm not too far off the mark. Honestly, I took the biggest risk with uh, Diana, uh, the cat girl, because she looks just so shy. Like she's so worried about that thing she's pouring her the alcoholic beverage she's making. So. That's what I went with. I could be wrong. I don't really care. <laughs> I think she turned out cute enough. Um, I really like the pink hair on her, actually. Uh, I would definitely wouldn't have jumped to pink hair uh, for her design, like looking at all the, the blue and orange on her, but it works really well. It's super cute. I'm also surprised that there aren't more cat girls. <laughs> um, so that's cool. They also- they all use a different, um, um, weapon. I know that much. Like, I'm pretty sure Diana here uses a bow. Klee uses- well, bombs. It's categorized under magic. I think she summons the bombs. Magic, technically. And then- and then Kiki uses a sword. I think that's a lot of fun. I think the variety of different weapons 
in Genshin Impact is really cool because that 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 does also play into the element of helping characters feel different. Because despite all three of these characters having basically the same body type, they all play completely differently because they they all used completely different weapons, and that's really cool. And on top of that, they all use different elements as well. Um, Klee is fire, Kiki is water, I think, and then Diana. I don't care. <laughs> I I had looked it up before I started recording this, but I I forgot. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, the combination of different types of weapons and then also elements, I think, is a lot of fun. That's the coolest part about the gameplay of Genshin Impact is seeing how different people fight, despite it all still boiling down to you hit square a lot and then you win. Um, because, like, even characters using the same, like, the same weapon type or of the same element will fight differently. It's just really cool. Like, and, like, like, not every heavy sword character feels the same. It's just, it's really neat. Um, so I, th th that's one of the things that makes me believe that MiHoYo could do a really good job of, of making a game not limited by being on mobile. Um, because... The combat has all the elements of being, like, really thought-provoking and interesting and cool. But then you can't have it be too in-depth because it needs to be able to run on mobile. Um, but that's just me. I don't know if that'll ever happen. MiHoYo, I'm sure, is doing fine <laughs> with their current, current program of Genshin Impact makes a million billion dollars every single day because people want to spend money to get their the new favorite characters that they've got and they upload they release new characters all the time they are regularly making new characters for this game despite it already having a pretty large cast it's very cool and like i mentioned i do really appreciate that they they care that that peop not everyone wants to ogle the girls and some of us want to ogle the cute boys instead. That's just really nice because I feel like so often in games like these, you know, you'll see this in like, like Fire Emblem Heroes or just other summoning games where you summon like heroes to, to fight or whatever. Um, I feel like it's very much aimed at the, the male gaze where it's a lot of very cute, well-designed, pretty, sexy girls. And then, the getting the even, getting the boys is a bummer. Like even me as a as a straight woman being like, give me those cute men. It's like you get a, a male character in these other games, and it's like, well, he looks dumb. I would have would have rather had a cute girl character because at least she'd look cool. <laughs> so I I appreciate that MiHoYo is kind of setting a new standard of hey, care about how your male characters look too, guys, because um, well, because yeah, do that. <laughs> I think between the three of these, I think Klee's design is technically the best. This one here, the one I'm working on. Um, and that's hard to be like an objective thing about. Really, it is, it's subjective. You could disagree with me and be completely valid. Um, I think hers is the best because it is the simplest um, between the three. Like. She's got the least amount of little bits and bobs and design elements on her, despite the fact that I, I, I mentioned that Kiki was my favorite. <laughs> She's the most complex one of the group, and uh, but I think I think between the three of them, I think Klee just looks better. I think Kiki specifically, she, there's a lot of things going on her. She gets the closest to being messy with the hat and the the paper and then also this large um, necklace and then also these the big cape things hanging off of her it's just there's a lot going on on her um, and it still ends up looking really good which is great but uh, I think Klee is just more approachable I think that's why they use her more often in um, like marketing and stuff it's usually like Jean, is that her name? We'll call her Jean. And and Klee, I feel like, if it's not gonna be the Traveler. Uh, because she's pretty easily recognizable. She could by all means be like the mascot character of of uh, Genshin Impact because while her design is technically complex, it can be boiled down very easily. Um, just kind of make sure you've got that red dress with white trim and a big red hat, and, and you've got her. Uh, the other two here, they've got a lot more details that need to be added to make it, like, read as them properly. 
And that's why I think Klee has the strongest design, because if you can simplify a character design um, and still be able to recognize them as the character, I think that's just a very... I, I just think that's a good, good way to go about... Or rather, how do I say this? I think that is a good way to designate a strong design. There we go. Got it out. Worded it perfectly. <laughs> but don't be afraid to let me know um, which one of these three is your favorite. Honestly, of the whole Genshin cast, don't be afraid to tell me, like, who's your favorite? Who do you play as? Who's on your team? I really like the team element of Genshin. You've got four characters on you at all times. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I think that's just really cool. I kind of wish the different characters could kind of, like, interact, like have little skits, but that's- I'm probably asking for too much there. <laughs> I, I just think the characters are really interesting, you know? Um, and there's clearly, like, plenty of lore and stuff around them that they could chit-chat. I mean, that's most of what the fan- fandom is, honestly, is I, I've seen a lot of people being like, how would these two interact? And, I don't know, I think it'd be cool to get to see that for real in the game, but- it's a mobile game, so they're a little bit limited, I suppose. My team, um, for my super duper good Genshin gaming, where I haven't beaten the dragon yet, uh, I've got Deluke and Barbara. I've got Noelle, and then the fourth one tends to change out a lot, and I can't currently remember who the fourth person is. I'll put them on screen here now. Um, <laughs> it's them. Wow, what a cool person. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me know who you play as, who's your current team, or your favorite team to, to keep on ya. Um, so yeah. I think I- a part of me wishes I wanted to do Genshin fan art more. <laughs> Cause at the end of the day, despite drawing these three characters taking forever, and despite me being like, God, oh, these designs are a pain, they're so detailed, they do look really good. I'd like to take the time to be able to study them more to figure out how to kind of capture the ability to, to have these really detailed, nice designs um, and have them still feel cohesive. That would be great. But, man, I got, I got other things to do. <laughs> Perhaps in my free time I will uh, try to render more, more Genshin characters. Um, because I, I, I would love to help myself and then also others by proxy through videos like this figure out how to successfully render such complicated designs. Because while I went about it uh, a, a good amount in this video, um, I've still really only scratched the surface. Uh, I'd love to watch a video. I wish they could upload some kind of behind-the-scenes thing. I'd love to watch a video of one of their designers going about designing a character. I'd love to see the process for that. That's something I want to see for basically everything I'm interested in. I always want to see, like, how they de decide on a design for a character. I think that would be so much fun. Also, don't be afraid to let me know, um, what your favorite weapon types to use are because this is this really surprised me i like the heavies i think the heavy swords feel really cool um because and i usually don't like playing with heavy characters like that uh but genshin keeps them feeling really like zippy you know like i, I don't feel like i'm taking an eternity to swing my sword around um they balance it really well which is really nice but let me know what your favorite is. Personally, my least favorite are the bow and arrows, because uh, they just don't jive with the rest of Genshin's combat, I don't think. They're the eh, going... They're just too slow. They're just too... They're not my thing. But let me know. Maybe you like them. Um, also, as a bonus, if you're a real smart cookie, let me know if they could, like, if they were to add a new weapon type what would you want it to be? I think that sounds like a super fun question. I want to see those answers for sure. <laughs> for this background, I had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was like, draw these cute little girls. And then I had no plan outside of that. Um, so I, I played around with that idea for a little bit of giving them like kind of a drop shadow. 
but I couldn't figure out how to make that look good. I just wasn't jiving with this diagonal composition I wanted to do as well. I don't know why I decided to compose them in this diagonal line. I think it looks kind of interesting, but I don't know if it's the smartest choice I could have made. I didn't want them to feel clustered. I, I wanted a weird balance on the page. I guess I got what I wanted. <laughs> um, but yeah, then I decided just a flat black background and then this white border to kind of help them pop a little bit. I figured that looks that looks kind of nice. This could be a poster. I don't know who would want this as a poster, but it could be. <laughs> I do end up, spoiler, I do end up adding uh, sparkles to, <laughs> to the background because I like sparkles. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. I love them. Going around the characters like this is always a little bit of a pain. I know that there's probably a way I could do this quickly, but um, I haven't looked up how to do it, so I always just do it by hand. <laughs> so it's always a little, a little bit of a, not a slog, but you know, it takes a bit of time. But it's always really fun. I like seeing the negative space on a character when I'm done with a picture. Like, all these open spaces between them. Like... Like, how Kiki's braid makes a loop around her cape things. Um, I don't know, it's just really fun. That was something I learned in sculpture, was you don't- you shouldn't just care about how your art looks. You need to care about the negative space around it as well. Because- because that, that can just really help a lot. It can help elevate your composition, and also, if you're doing like a, a pretty splash art, it can help with um, balance as well, with like giving your character a strong, cool silhouette. Because while it's easy to just draw them standing around in like a T-pose, that's not particularly interesting. And yeah, just, you know, trying to keep in mind how the negative space around your character also looks, um, it can just help a lot. And there's the, there's the sparkles, and here's the picture. Uh, thanks for sticking around for me, Jabber John, for way too long. I hope you had fun. Please don't be afraid to answer all of my rambling questions um, in the comments, because I think that sounds fun and I want to see them. <laughs> Thank you to my patrons. You're all super cool. Thank you for voting, and I hope you aren't disappointed by... by... life. <laughs>